nation called Kenya. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that we can be able to discuss these things that are being, you know, deliberated at, at the higher stages. We, at least we have, a, I, I don't know how far the word goes, but at least we can have a word about it, yes? Yes, yes. And if you have any, I don't know, burning sensational issues, please let us know on the handles I have just given you. So we are obviously going to start, to, I know it's not obvious to everyone, but like to me, it's a bit obvious. We're going to start with the cost of living because it is, it is disgusting. Everything is, is so high from from the prices of LPG, that's liquefied petroleum gas, to just, it's just, what's happening? <laughs> In a nutshell, what is going on before we kind of dive into it? What do you think is happening? Why is the cost of living, why has it soared so much? Are we seeing, well, or rather, what's the change between the, the regime, the current regime, and the previous one? Why is the high cost of living so high? Okay. Uh Thank you so much for that question. Uh, there are so many things that have contributed to, you know, the rise in the cost of living in our country. And I would uh, suggest that, uh, you know, in one way or another, this is an infringement on uh, the rights of Kenyans. Mm -hmm. You know, every citizen has a right uh, to, you know, an affordable and sustainable state of a livelihood. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not what we are seeing today. Number one, when we have uh, more expenditure on the government side, the government is spending so much on irrelevant issues or rather irrelevant, you know, irrelevant, just irrelevant things. How, 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 how can we be creating offices like the one we saw recently, the office of, of the, the first spouse to the, the prime cabinet secretary, yes. yet we are having people dying mm -hmm. in Trukana. Mm -hmm. We are having people dying in Isiolo. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot be discussing about the rise in the cost of living, yet money is not being used properly. Mm -hmm. Public finance is not being, being used in the right way or rather in a, in, in a way that is supposed, we are supposed to, to, to see it being used. Mm -hmm. So I will suggest that uh, first let us cut down on the cost of uh, how the government is spending its uh, uh, or rather the public finance on issues that are just irrelevant mm -hmm. so that at least we can be able to uphold these uh, rights you know the social economic rights the right to food the right to education and generally the right to security because mm -hmm. these are the most fundamental these are the fundamental rights to a citizen that mm -hmm. ensure that citizens are able to contribute to the economy otherwise mm -hmm. we are still going to talk about the rise in the cost of living uh, the poor state of the citizens unless we sort out this mm -hmm. issue. All right, so just to get the facts correct. So as of the 9th of February of this year, 2023, uh, the liquefied petroleum gas, that is LPG, at 6 kgs was retailing at 1,800. That's 1,800 shillings. And now, in less than a week, it shot to 2,600 shillings. And this was largely blamed to uh, the Energy Petroleum Regulatory Authority is not regulating these prices. Now, in today's newspaper, I'm really glad that it came up. We have uh, the deputy president says Gashagwa pledges to end monopoly in milk, gas, and sectors. So if I could read a couple of sentences for you. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa has vowed to end monopoly in the milk and gas sector in the country. Gashagwa charged that life has become unbearable for Kenyans due to continued monopoly of the milk and gas sector that has seen to an increase in the commodities. Last week, President William Ruto promised that his administration will ensure that gas retails at between 300 shillings and 500 shillings starting June this year. So, and I'm jumping a bit, but we continue to say there has been a monopoly by one person in the milk sector. We're opening up that sector. We're going to open up the milk industry and gas industry, Gashagwa says. According to Gashagwa, retired President Uhuru Kenyatta and his Jubilee administration did not want him and President Ruto to win the 2022 polls so that they can continue to control the critical sectors of the economy. Gashagwa further reiterated that they inherited empty coffers when they took over the leadership in September last year, adding that the same people who labeled them thieves plundered the country's coffers. However, there is no court of law that has found the former administration of financial misappropriation despite Gashagwa's claims. This sounds a lot like he said, she said, because as they have said, there's no court of law that has determined on the same misappropriation of funds. So 
should we believe what we are being told? Is it, is it true that someone is you know, siphoning money from the economy or money that's supposed to be or intended to be injected into the economy and that is why prices are being, and if monies or said so were being misappropriated during the previous regime, why are we feeling the effects now? Okay, uh, thanks once more. You know, if you want, I've always said that if you want to be a good judge, mm -hmm. or rather a person who gives correct judgment into um, different kind of issues, such as this one which we are seeing today, you must not be partial. You must not incline on one side. Mm -hmm. And by saying so, uh, we must consider the fact that uh, whatever is being said must could be in one way uh, a means of political witch hunt, mm -hmm. could be on the other way a truth that cannot be validated. Mm -hmm. So uh, from my own side, I can state that, uh, of course, uh, saying that there is an, a, a monopoly in the market, uh, it's not true. Mm. Because uh, we've been told that there is, only, there is only one person who has monopolized the milk industry. Of course, in the public limelight, people mm -hmm. already know that maybe it's Brookside, mm -hmm. uh, which is linked to former President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. And I can challenge this, that I think Brookside company is one of the best, you know, the best in the market, mm -hmm. buying milk from farmers at the cheapest prices. Mm -hmm. So that's not monopoly. Mm -hmm. And uh, competition has not been, uh, you know, defiled. Mm -hmm. There is still competition. We have uh, other companies such as uh, KCC. Mm -hmm. I can give you an example. In Molo, we still have a cooling plant. Mm -hmm. in, in Molo town, we still have a cooling plant uh, being owned by the government. That's the, the, new Kenya KC, the, the new KCC being owned by the government. Mm -hmm. So there is no monopoly. It's just that there is no motivation ah. from different you know, uh, competitors. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at uh, issues to do with the national gas, uh, with this uh, cooking gas and all that, uh, and the LPG, there is only one argument that uh, if there is monopoly indeed, uh, what has the government done to ensure that the, mono the, monopo the monopoly is broken? Mm -hmm. uh, for the longest time, we have had uh, these companies produce gases to us we have not complained. Mm -hmm. Why is it that we are complaining no. at this point? Mm -hmm. uh, I will invite the government to delve into a serious matter, mm -hmm. such as the KPLC. Mm -hmm. Last, the last, if I can remember, in the year 20, from 2013 to 2016, the only period when there was a national blackout was on January 2016. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this led to an uproar and uh, the government worked on that situation. And uh, I think for the longest period from 2016 to, 20 to 2022, mm -hmm. we, have not, we have not had issues to do with uh, power blackouts, those major power blackouts. And uh, all this is being brought by how we are handling, you know, the monopolization of these industries. Mm -hmm. But now the government is arguing that uh, you know what we need to move to the solar uh, to the solar kind of elect uh, electrical power, and uh, this is not what we should be talking about. Let's not talk about mono, uh, breaking the monopoly in the gas sector. Let's mm -hmm. not talk about breaking the monopoly in the you know in the milk industry. Let's talk about issues that affect us as citizens. Mm -hmm. People are complaining that the high, the, the, there is a, an upsurge or rather a rise in the cost of electricity. Mm -hmm. How can I be paying a hundred shillings yet the taxes are so high? Mm -hmm. So I'm ending up using a lot of money for electricity that is not even sustainable. Why don't we monopolize the Kenya Power Lighting Company mm -hmm. instead of us talking about milk, talking about gas mm -hmm. that is not sustainable to us? Mm -hmm. People do take coffee People do take uh, other kind of beverages, mm -hmm. but electricity is something that we should be talking about mm -hmm. in terms of monopolization or rather breaking the monopoly so that we can ensure there is fair competition on the same. There seems to have been a, a couple of changes made in, in regards to electricity by people who have not involved shareholders. That's what I'm hearing you say. So we should be involved. We should be 
yes. part of the conversation. We should be part of the conversation because in the long run, it's the Kenyan, it's the common Mwanainchi who is suffering. You're paying a lot for energy that is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. We are paying a lot of taxes, especially for those citizens who are using the tokens, you know, the token mode of uh, paying electricity. Which is a lot of us, yes. Yeah. So this is what we should be discussing. Instead of us talking about milk, you don't take your milk to Brookside, yet you are complaining. You don't, uh, you, you, you are not a consumer of uh, milk from Brookside, yet you are complaining okay. about monopoly. Mm -hmm. These are issues that we as Kenyans need to open our eyes to. If there is monopoly, let competition be, and you know, we cannot incline on one side. We also need to hear, you know, these are the dangers of a single story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also need to listen from other sides. Mm -hmm. We cannot be only complaining about the defendant. Mm -hmm. Let us also listen from the defendant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spoken like a true learned friend. Yeah. Right, just before we come out of the topic of the high cost of living, there is a story that was on the news, or the mainstream news rather, this weekend. And they were talking about East African seeds. Now that the point was to plant drought resistant seeds or the climate smart varieties, that's what they call them. And that's where biotechnology comes in. Do you think we are a step closer to addressing the issue of drought and the F word we don't like to say, famine? Uh, I would want to echo this one using the words of my, I, I was a student at St. Joseph's Boys High School, Kitale, mm -hmm. and uh, my late principal, Wilson Yego, may his soul rest in eternal peace, told me that, or rather told us that uh, you will never fight technology. Technology is inevitable. Mm -hmm. You must face it. Mm -hmm. You must embrace it. And so with the coming up of, uh, you know, this biotechnology in terms, uh, which is uh, in relation to agriculture, is something that, of course, we need to, to encourage for more research. We need also to embrace it so that we can settle these issues to do with, uh, uh, with drought, famine that is affecting our people. But, you know, the most important thing I would want to encourage or rather to ask Kenyans to provoke their minds is on the fact that Kenya has a lot of food. Mm -hmm. If you go to a county like Nakuru, mm -hmm. people are harvesting potatoes, mm -hmm. people are harvesting maize, there is peace. Mm -hmm. Why can't we buy from our local farmers instead Actually, of us the, going there outside? Was, there was an issue about now there are particular con con counties, sorry, particular counties that are very rich in food, but the transportation now is becoming the problem. And this is where the government yes. should delve into. Uh -huh. yeah. So instead of now, now stretching into other means of, of trying to curb the, the vice or drought, we should actually work with what we're having. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'll just encourage, let the government take keen interest, keen interest on uh, our market, our agricultural markets. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of food in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Issues are just, uh, we, we only need to concentrate on how best we can, you know, raise the bar. Mm -hmm. In terms of, uh, you know, I was like trying to ask myself, I will give you an example. A county like, uh, which county, ca county do you know that it's dry or being faced by drought? Garissa. Garissa. A county like Garissa, where is the need of them uh, building roads, constructing roads? Yet their people are dying. Mm. Their livestock, uh, you know, succumbing to, to the effects of drought. Mm -hmm. Yet they can establish multi-million uh, schemes of irrigation, irrigation schemes mm -hmm. to sustain their livelihood. They can, like for example, we've had that, uh, okay, I'm not sure I'm not in the government, I don't work in the treasury, but we've just had that uh, the, the former, uh, the, uh, we've had that the first lady of uh, the United States who had uh, come to pay a courtesy call to our, to our presidency, mm -hmm. uh, they donated 16 billion. Why can't we like say half of this money, mm -hmm. we are going to you know, try to find a lasting solution, a long-term solution that is going to, you know, in terms of uh, settling drought issues and farming, we set out irrigation schemes mm -hmm. and we have a legislation on, on the same so that our people are not going to cry about drought ever again, mm -hmm. yes. I just had another point slap me, but uh, on the verge of <laughs> never leaving this particular <laughs> point, let's just move on to mm -hmm. something else that has been making a lot of noise in both the political scene and just generally the 
the nation at large. So the LGBTQ plus community mm, in the constitution apparently it is criminalized. It is criminalized. But just the other day, the Supreme Court made a ruling that enabled it to, to be able to be recognized by non-governmental institutions. How do you feel about that? Because we've, we've had a lot of, in fact, what intrigued me the most is, again, during the weekend, I saw, I don't know if Rastafarians need, need a different society in itself, but they also came forward and made their, you know, grievances well, made the grievances known that apparently it's it's not morally correct. So it's not only the church, but now you have that, and then we have MPs actually coming together from Azimio, from Kenya Kwanzaa, finding common ground finally, and also kind of saying, ah, the Supreme Court might be just alone on this one for this particular decision. What, what do you think is is the the underlying problem? Is it because it is not according to African culture or morals? Is it because they are looking at it as Western influence? And it's, I don't know if it's coincidence that the ruling was made just before Dr. Jill Biden, now the first lady of the United States, came to visit. What do you think is, is, is the problem here? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the Kenyan constitution is one of the most diverse, the most, like, uh, it's one of the best constitutions, I think, in our region in our continent and uh, one of its provisions under uh, article 36 it provides for the freedom of association mm -hmm. and uh, freedom of uh, association under the same article 36 sub article 3c i think uh, sub article 3b it talks about issues to do with fair hearing mm -hmm. before people can register mm -hmm. an uh, association such as the one which we we've always had the lgbtq so I would suggest or rather indicate that uh, indeed they have been heard. Mm -hmm. Their rights to being heard in relation to this article have not been infringed. But again, this is a, is a matter relating to our national values. Mm -hmm. I would want to drive you to this. Come think of this. Uh, we've always learned in history or rather those of us, our younger brothers and sisters who are uh, I think in primary schools and uh, th those ones in uh, high schools, they have always been taught about the missionaries. Mm -hmm. The missionaries came to bring, uh, they, are, they were foreigners, they were people from the West, they came to bring about uh, Christianity and the good news. But at the same time, up to where we have reached, we are, they are the ones now coming, trying to influence us, telling us that this is what we should, as we should accept. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to to drive in the point that we don't, we don't just do things. As Africans, we are enlightened. Mm -hmm. We don't just do things because we are being told they are good for us. Mm -hmm. We also have our own instincts, our own brains to think about it. And uh, upon this issue, I will suggest that we are not yet ripe even for this debate. Mm -hmm. uh, because I will give you an example. Uh, the United States of America got independence in Ooh. 1776. They've had like 40 something presidents currently yeah, they, and they, now. How many? <laughs> there are so <laughs> many. <laughs> they got independence in 1776. Mm -hmm. And Kenya got independence in 1963. Mm -hmm. So we are, they are like 300 years older than us. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to start talking about this debate, mm -hmm we need to give, us, to give ourselves like 300 years mm -hmm. because this is not for us to partake. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I will still argue that we cannot trade our morals for money. We cannot trade our morals for donations. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that uh, that's what the US president or rather the US government was up to. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not into that because it, it's not even validated. Mm -hmm. We don't know if, uh, if it's true or not true. Mm -hmm. But on issues to do with LGBTQ, of course, people can engage in registration of associations, but let it not be, let it be limited not to the, cons the, the uh, let it not let it be limited not to uh, you know the infringement of national values. Mm -hmm. There are values we as Africans hold so dear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, before before I conclude on that, uh -huh. there is something that uh, we we we. Uh, when we call a, we call a people a society, mm -hmm. we call them a society because there is something that defines them, and it's those 
values mm -hmm. and morals. Mm -hmm. So once we accept such issues to, 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 to be partaken into, mm -hmm. then we lose that uh, society definition. Actually, there are a couple of points, other schools of thought that kind of echo what you've just said. So we have um, people, I don't want to say condemn, but having a little bit of a situation or causing a bit of fiction with this particular situation because they claim um, it's attacking on family because there's no reproduction when it comes to same-sex marriages or affiliations. And also it's an attack or norms and beliefs, just what you said. There's, as Africans or as Kenyans, we have a, a specific uh, social structure, or very ingrained. I, I don't know if it's written in stone, but it's, it's not going to come you know, to change any time soon. So, and also, just on that, another one that echoes with what you're saying. So we have Garissa Township MP Dekal Mohammed has weighed into the ongoing debate over registration of a gay association in Kenya. According to the lawmaker, the fact that Kenyans are even having a conversation over the same is a sure sign that the country was moving in the wrong direction. So not, not that there has been made a ruling, not that there's a decision, not that there's backlash, just that we're talking about it yeah. as a problem. So to ask ourselves as Kenyans whether the Supreme Court was right or wrong, or to debate about the whole issue is in itself wrong. Again, you just said, Kala just said very um, wisely, I want to believe that we are 300 years too young <laughs> to be having this conversation. We're giving the issue, he continues, the issue undue publicity. And as a country, I must say we have stooped too low. Last week, the Supreme Court gave the nod that allowed formation of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex association. Now, these three judges, Philomena Mwilo, Smokin Wanjala, and Joki Ndongo, ruled in favor of the group, while Justices Mohammed Ibrahim and William Oko had dissenting opinions. The majority judges had in their decision declared that it was discriminatory for the NGO Coordination Board to deny LGBTQ I, this one goes I, people opportunity to form associations to champion their rights. So according to the cow, the continuous discussion and debate about the issue has been met with a lot of condemnation from a cross section of Kenyans, only serve to give publicity to an issue that should not be talked about in the first place. He says all religions abhor such acts. So I will kind of skip and um, finish with this. It should be noted that the Supreme Court is not that supreme. It's Parliament that has supreme, that is the supreme, and which makes laws and corrects where the gaps are, and we will do so, said Mohammed. And he said, according to the proposal, a person dissatisfied with any decision by the Apex Court will be required to collect at least two million uh, signatures to force IBC to subject the decision to a referendum. So the already the Senator Godfrey Osotsi had suggested an amendment to the Constitution to take away the powers of the su Supreme Court as the final arbiter. So things have kind of escalated here. So it's not just the topic that is, is disturbing or the ruling rather, it's, it's the fact that we're talking about it. And now that we've gone so far ahead as to <laughs> consider revoking the Supreme Court's, how to say, um, powers as, as I quote, <laughs> final arbiter. So what do you think about that? Do you know, one thing that I will, uh, I will, I will state mm -hmm. is that as Africans or as Kenyans, we ought to protect our values more than even democracy. Mm -hmm. Our values, our moral fabric is the most important aspect. Like I've just told you, it's what defines a society. Mm -hmm. It's what defines a people. Why are these people called the KBC Fraternity? Mm -hmm. Why is this group called the Y254 Fraternity? It's because there are values that are inclined to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing, another, another, an another interesting thing about me, I will even argue it out that this is not even a matter that should even be debated in parliament. Mm -hmm. These are matters that affects all Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's so to be passed, then it should be passed to the extent of its impossibility mm -hmm. through a referendum. Mm -hmm. People must like give their opinion on the same mm -hmm. because it's something that touches every part of our country, mm -hmm. every heart, mm -hmm. our future generations. You know, let me, let me tell you this. It's out of science. A man and a man, they mm -hmm. cannot sire a child. Uh, a lady and a lady, they cannot sire a child. 
So we as Africans, we, will, we, we wouldn't want to see a situation where our population is decreasing because for those of us who believe in God, who believe in Allah, we know that, uh, you know, uh, procreation is, uh, is a command from God. And uh, once we hold this process, then it's like, uh, you know, disobedience to, to that supreme calling. Mm -hmm. So there are so many issues that need to be debated over this. And, and uh, 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 that's why I'm saying it's not even, you know, when we take it to parliament, it's just that uh, they are speaking for us. Mm -hmm. But we also need to speak for ourselves. And the best way that we can speak for ourselves is through that ballot. You know, President Abraham Lincoln once said that a ballot is more dangerous than a bullet because wow. it's in form of a decision. Mm -hmm. I am speaking up about issues that do affect me. Mm -hmm. If we allow such kind of issues mm -hmm. to, to, to arise in our, current, in our current generation, then we are not going to have children in the future. We are not going to have people to lead in the future. We are not going to have people leading us in the future. So this is something that we as Africans, we must protect our national values mm -hmm. more than we even protect democracy. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and I will put a full stop to that particular conversation there before our time runs out. So we can touch on our last point. Now, I will start with the opposition, Azimio. So Azimio had provided for lack of a better term, an ultimatum, 14 days, and we should be in the 12th day by now, so two more days to go f to a call for mass action. So now, as I have been trying to weigh the situation, listening to different schools of thought, we have people who are coming to say that if, if Azimio chooses to just, just contend on the issue of the servers to be opened again, something that we have, again, as the Supreme Court comes into the conversation, something that has already been dealt with, then they may not be as successful as they choose to be. But someone else comes and said, or a different school of thought, uh, also says if they are willing to talk about the high cost of living and uh, things that are affecting us as citizens, Kenyans, on the ground, maybe perhaps maybe perhaps that they will be received appropriately or accordingly. I don't know if that spells into mass action, but what do you think about it? Okay, uh, I would invite you to, 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 to also go and uh, read through uh, the conditions that uh, the Azimio leader had set mm -hmm. for the Kenya Kwanzaa government. Mm -hmm. And one of them was uh, in, in between that 14 day ultimatum, mm -hmm was for the Kenya Kwanzaa government to reduce or rather lower the cost of living. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons why I think the coalition is calling for mass action. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that I will, I will state is that it's an international aspect of law. Mm -hmm. It's a local aspect of law that uh, there is, you know, a right to picket. Mm -hmm. There is a right to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. There is a right to, to to riot, mm -hmm. though peaceful, peacefully. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is what uh, the, 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 the opposition leaders are up to. Mm -hmm. Although I am, I wouldn't say that I'm part of, uh, you know, uh, the leadership of uh, that, that side, because, you know, the best thing as a youth, as, as a youth that I can do is remaining independent. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes it, y you can find yourself inclining to one end, but the best thing that you can do is being independent so that you can have a clear mind on how things are running. So uh, in terms of uh, the Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa issue, mm -hmm. uh, everyone has a right mm -hmm. to, to riot mm -hmm. where they feel like uh, there, is, uh, you know, there is an issue and uh, maybe the governance is not being handled in the way it's, it's supposed to be handled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so literally Azimio have a right Again, just, just to maybe <laughs> redirect the question, I do understand that they, one of the measures they noted was the high cost of living. But it seems to the people that it's just the servers that is the problem. Like it's, it's what's being highlighted is like number one through five is servers and, and we need to go back and check our numbers were a uh, lot more than they're letting on. And then maybe number six, number seven is the high cost of living. So I feel like, I am understanding like the ground feels like there is more emphasis on, on what happened before. And it feels like we're being dragged backwards 
So. Okay, uh, I will. Uh, I would want to also invite you to. If you are a leader, you put yourself in the shoes of uh, Raila Amolo mm -hmm. a person who, in one way or another, has lost. I think is it five elections now? Yes. Five elections. And there is that one election that you clearly feel mm -hmm. you are in deep conviction. This is the one. This is the one. Mm -hmm. Or rather, this, is, this election is that one election that was stolen from me. I have lost so many, but on this one, mm -hmm. I am not at peace with mm -hmm. my heart. Mm -hmm. Can you prevent such kind of a person from seeking the truth? Even until death, mm -hmm. just pursuing that one aspect of truth. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how, uh, how the election was conducted. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is, is in those servers. Mm -hmm. And this is what Raila Amolo Odinga has been requesting. Just open the servers so that it, and he's not saying that open the servers for I to check on them. Mm -hmm. He's saying let an independent body access the servers and verify them to check whether indeed the election was credible. Mm -hmm. So these are person who is pursuing the truth mm -hmm. for his own interest and the interest of his supporters. You will say that uh, most of his supporters are saying that uh, the service should be opened, but I, will feel, I, I feel like uh, most people, they feel like, uh, you know, the government should not be there. That's what people, uh, that's what, uh, let me call them, the Azimio supporters feel like. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the government is, is not supposed to be there because the, the, the cost of living has, has shot up, mm -hmm. you know. Number two, the government is there illegim illegimate, ille illegitimately. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, these are some of the issues that are just running, mm -hmm. you know, finding their way among people's thoughts. And, uh, yeah, that's what right. I think. So just to strike balance, now we have the Kenya Kwanzaa. We have now the new Secretary General, that is Cleophas Malala, who is taking over from the Prime Cabinet Secretary, Musalimu Davidi, who is, I, I, I don't know if it's insinuating or suggesting that Kenya Kwanzaa should just merge. And we've had Ford Kenya and ANC uh, coming up and saying, uh, we're not quite in agreement with what you're saying to merge as one, but we still are backing the President, His Excellency President William Bruto. So is there... Is there a situation within the, the camp itself? Are they in a row? What's going on? In as much as uh, we would want to protect, we are also protecting our values more than even democracy. We should not like uh, leave democracy behind. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a right to, you know, form a political party. You know, all this uh, in accordance to the law. Uh, if you want to form a, a political party, you are at liberty provided you meet the requirements of the law. Mm -hmm. What we are seeing in Kenya Kwanzaa, uh, I feel like if it should be so, then let it be out of uh, diplomacy. Let it not be out of coercion. Mm -hmm. Because if it's out of coercion, then it's like we are now fighting to go back to the dark days, which some of us have been reading about those days. We were not there to experience the days. Mm -hmm. But uh, I feel like uh, we should, it should just be conducted in a diplomatic way and mm -hmm. not in a coercive way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Th thank you so very much for uh, coming and discussing the state of the nation. Uh, there are a couple of more interesting things that have been happening, but we chose to take these three would have been having very, very big elephants <laughs> in the room. So once again, maybe please uh, state your name and your purpose, and then I can wind up. Okay. Like... Thank you. Like I stated, my name is Caleb Ikenye. I'm a law student here in the University of Nairobi, and I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, you know, they have always said that youths are the leaders of tomorrow, but it's like this tomorrow has never reached. And uh, I challenge every youth in every corner of this country that if indeed you are the leaders of tomorrow, then you must be worthy being called those leaders. We need to like conduct ourselves. Let me say this, let our brains not be carried for us. Let us have our brains 
be for us. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Let's continue with these conversations. And I know that we shall one day, you know, secure our country. Nah, I like that. I like that. So if you are just joining us, we began the day with an introduction. Then we uh, slivered over to Stephanie Ayeta with youth and career. Then myself with youth and politics. And now we're going to have a short commercial break and come back with Brian Sakwa 101 on social media talking to a panel of gentlemen. And they have a very interesting topic. I urge you not to miss it. Don't go away. <laughs>